I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just what I'm supposed to be. I'm in the right place at the right time. I am just what I'm supposed to be. Oh, my soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. Oh, my soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. I am getting the message loud and clear. My soul is welcome here. 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 Thank you, Don. Now, let's remain standing because we're going to say our vision statement together. We are a spiritual community inspiring transformation through love, joy, and integrity. Thank you. Please be seated. So, again, welcome. I'm not Tracy. Tracy is unlucky enough to be in Hawaii today. So, um, I'm going to try to do my best to fill in for her. So as we always say here, welcome to Unity of East Louisville, and wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. And I'd also like to say just a special thank you and honor to all the mothers out there, including my mother who came today with me, so thank you to all the mothers out there. Um, This service, as you know, is not possible without a ton of people working. And we have our ushers and greeters who greeted you when you came in. Um, Our chaplains who will be here to pray with you after the service. We have Les and Laura on the sound and the PowerPoint. And the always amazing Don. Thank you, Don, very much. And our special music today is quite special. Our very own Charlie Logston. So we're delighted to have Charlie here with us today to share his gifts. And our message is by Reverend Valerie, and it it is called The Chords of Life. Um, I don't really have very many announcements, just to make sure you turn off your cell phones. But Tracy did send me a joke. (laughs) Yay, Tracy. So I don't know if it's a dad joke or a bad joke, but I'll tell it anyway. She says, during the science lesson... There was a teacher who picked up a magnet, and she said to her second grade class, my name begins with the letter M, and I pick up things. What am I? And a little boy in the back answered, you're a mommy. So So please stand and greet each other. Oh, Colleen has a... All right, next Sunday, if you want to hear more of Dawn, and who doesn't, 1.30 at Turtle Run. Okay. Now, uh, do we have any first-time visitors? I forgot to ask. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Did you get a welcome packet? Awesome. Thank you. We're glad you're here. So now we can stand and greet each other in love and joy.
the good energy. Let's make our way back to our seats. All right, so please just remain standing for our song, I Release and I Let Go. to be. I honor and bless the world's mothers. Today I offer a blessing of gratitude for the loving, nurturing spirit of mothers. I bless my mother and those who have shared a mother's love by supporting me throughout my life. I think of the many ways they have been present for me over the years with unconditional acceptance and love. I envision all the mothers, all the grandmothers, and all the caregivers throughout the world surrounded by love and by light. For those in my life, I take time to express my appreciation with words, gifts, and time to mothers-to-be. I prayerfully affirm health and ever-deepening joy. To mothers no longer in the world, I hold them in loving prayer and hold thoughts of joy and gratitude. I bless their souls each and every day, ongoing journeys, knowing bonds of love keep their memories alive. Her children rise up and call her happy. Proverbs 31, 28. And so it is. Our Creator which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us 
us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and leave us not in temptation but deliver us from error for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory So as we get started here, me with tears, because the daily word was very touching. This is the first Mother's Day without Mama. So just bear with me. So as we center in to that divine presence, God, spirit, eternal life, whatever name you choose, we connect knowing the love comes from that source within. We are divinely guided to that connection. As we put God first, we let go of the worries, we release the anxiety
and become aware of that spiritual connection, that higher consciousness. Resting up on the seat, planting your feet on the floor, and connecting to that silver cord that comes in through the top of your head as life. and runs down the spine, igniting all the centers in our being in this temple body. We feel the energy moving. We feel the life moving within us. That flow that is everlasting. We are spiritually fed through that flow, the flow of life. We feel the magnificence of life stirring. the unlimited possibilities of our being. We are unlimited and free. as we rest in the silence. Now as we take a breath, returning to this time and this place, filled with gratitude for the nurturing love, for the unlimited possibilities, for the right and perfect guidance. Knowing that the source is always there. As we tap in and listen to the divine mind and live in the greater flow of a conscious life with love and joy and peace all along the way.
And so it is. Amen. Get a pickup, Mr. Carr. This is a tripping house. <laughs> well, uh, just kind of a short song, but uh, I just made it up yesterday, so here we go. <laughs> When I was a boy, I had brothers three, Tony, Tom, Dave, and me. We'd run the neighborhood all day without a care, cause we knew when we got home, Mom was there. She cooked and cleaned all day, and she cleaned some more. She wiped up our muddy prints from the kitchen floor. Though we wouldn't say it then, we're proud to say it now. We were just little mama's boys. Supper on the table, sharp at five. It was a great time to be alive. Cuts, bruises, and broken bones. She saw it all. We'd all get new clothes to start school in the fall. We all grew up to be strong young men, all because of Mama's love way back then. Though we wouldn't say it then, we're proud to say it now. We're just little Mama. Proud to say it now, we were just little mama's boys. We are little mama's boys. Thank you, Charlie, for writing that one. It's a good one. And thank you all for putting up with my tears. Thought I had it under control, but the daily word got me. <laughs> it's surprising how that happens. And I knew that it was a possibility, <laughs> which is why I decided instead of Doing Mother's Day, it, you know, in the love of the mother and the nurturing, I would put a different slant on it and look at the chords of life. And how when we come onto this planet, we are attached to another being that nurtures us through the first part of our development. Right? And that creates attachments. Right? And our processing of our birthing and our childhood years and the origin family that we are born into and with helps shape who we've become today. And so no matter the relationship that you have with that mother figure in your life, whether it's a happy one or whether it's a sad one, whether they're here with you now or gone into the next realm, know that that beginning is the spark of life for everybody. 
We all share that. And that's a really important cord in our life. And so just as our spiritual cord, right, that silver cord that runs from the spiritual realm and connects us through our whole being, it also connects us to that nurturement of love from a physical being and the spiritual being and the mental being. So in our own conscious evolution, we are three. Again, that physical conscious being, so this physical body, then that psychological consciousless mental body that we are, and the spiritual awareness that spiritual realm that who we are and it's all interconnected there's no separating any of it just as whether we like it or not there's no separation from our family of origin sometimes no matter at what level because we might separate from them physically right because maybe it's unhealthy or maybe the relationship is not strong. But if we don't separate from them mentally, then we carry it with us. It's always there. And it's always in our realm of thinking and it's always interacting with the flow of our life because we get caught up in what our thoughts are about it. And then in our spiritual awareness. If we're not spiritually aware that we haven't let go mentally and physically to something that may not be healthy for us in this point in time, or we haven't been able to understand. So in, in that spiritual realm, it's the understanding of why, what is the lesson in this life? with this situation, with this person. And it, it not only happens with our moms, right? It happens in every relationship that we form. And so as we go through life, we form these different relationships and it creates a connection. And sometimes we try to prune that off, right? And we physically remove ourselves from that situation. Or we just grow and we lose touch. But if there was an incident or a challenge or something to be resolved and we never resolved it, what happens? It shows up in another person or another instance or another um, way, it will repeat itself until it's resolved. And so we have to look at the different layers of that consciousness. And one of the ways in the Bible, maybe if I can get into my computer, that we look at it is through the time when Jesus goes into the temple. Does everybody remember that story? And everybody thinks that he's angry, right? And what happens? So he goes into the temple and he finds out that they're selling oxen and sheep, the changers of money and merchandisers, and he casts it all out. He overturns the money changers' tables and orders out the merchandisers. The disciples who witnessed this act gave it 
a wrong level of meaning, of interpretation, because they say it was the zeal of thine house shall be eaten up. Jesus indicates that they were taking the wrong view. He said, destroy this temple and in three days I will rise, raise it up. Talking about, they thought he was talking about the building, but he was talking about the body. And what we realize is that we are eternal, improving and unfolding, and that our real pathway is an eternal progress. It doesn't mean that everything's been taken care of. It doesn't mean that we don't have any more concern about self-discipline and self-improvement. We can be gaining or growing and improving, even with some faults and shortcomings and weaknesses that occur, that might be hidden. So the temple is that being of our inner being. So think about this. In your own life, your relationships with yourself, right? So it's not about our relationships with others. It's really about the relationship that we have within our own being. That is where we do our work. We tend to place it on the outer because that's easy, right? So mama told me I had to do this, right? When you know that you have to do this. Your mom didn't need to tell you that. You already knew it. Because you have this instinctual knowing of truth. If your mom was a loving soul who, God love her, like I, I loved my mom very much, very deeply. She wasn't perfect, but like with Charlie's mom in the song, she did her best to show us a different way to live our life. She grew up in the Appalachian Mountains um, during the Depression and was raised by a mom who hunted for food. That's how they lived. Granny would go out with her shotgun and hunt and with her brothers and bring the food home. Just like they did to feed their families, that's what she did to feed her family. And so even though the evolution of humanity has changed and we, I don't go out and hunt <laughs> for my family's food, I do go out and work, right? for my family's food. And I still provide for them, for my own children, even though they're grown. We have a good connection. That's not always true in families. I understand that. My sister struggled because of her own parental um, challenges, and she was the oldest girl. And I know my brother struggled from his own parental challenges, um, our father was an alcoholic. So you lived in chaos a lot of the time, right? Um, even though mama tried to keep it in that realm of this is not your challenge. You have done nothing wrong. This is a challenge your father has. It's an illness and a sickness within him. Now that's pretty high consciousness and a way to explain that the situation that we're living in is not our fault. And so it was the facts of what had occurred within our own dad and his family. And knowing that we all have these different relationships and we all have these different experiences that mold us, even in our own family unit, Right? Because I have a brother that's 18 years older than me. He's my father's son. I have a sister. I had a sister who was 
12 years older than me. She's my mother's daughter. And then we had two, my, me and my other sister, who are four years apart, that had the same parents. But in all of that dynamic, there's all these different relationships with that nurturing figure. And that's not to say our dad wasn't nurturing. Even in his own state of chaos, he was a very nurturing man. Um, he just wasn't always present, right? And so how do we show up in that? How do we show up when our parents are not present, be it our mom or our dad? How do we show up and learn to move through these emotional um, spiritual challenges, really? And the way that we do that is what we teach in unity first and foremost every week. We have to go in to that daily time of prayer and meditation. We have to go in and connect and be fed by our source. I don't care what name you call it. It doesn't matter. But just as that infant within that mother's womb was fed, we have to be fed spiritually. And we can only do that through the connection of all that is omnipresent and so when we're in that state and we get all these thoughts of anxiety right how many of you get thoughts of anxiety and worry when you're yeah if you go back to the story the merchandisers represent the material anxiety in life or the day-to-day -day worries, the job, dinner. What's for dinner? That might interrupt our prayers. This is the time to solve the challenge without the worry or anxiety. So we have to release those thoughts. We have to pray and focus on the bigger picture, that spiritual awareness, that spiritual knowing of truth that lies within us. And the rest of it is going to take care of itself. When you connect and you ask, you know, if you have a challenge, what am I going to fix for dinner tonight? I guarantee you when you come out of your meditation, you won't have that problem anymore. You'll figure out what you're going to have for dinner tonight. That's an easy one. The money changers. I remember one time when I came back from Atlanta, I just moved back, and I walked into the church downtown, and that was my childhood church. That was the church we grew up in. And in the social room, there were all these tables and all this chaos, and they were selling this, and they were doing this, and this was going on, and I'm like, they were having a book study or something, I don't know. But all I saw was chaos, and I thought, boy, wouldn't Jesus have a filled day in here? He'd be over here flipping up all the tables. Because in that instance, what's really important is the values that we place in our life. And so what he's saying in that, in that story is that these are false values. This is all focused on the outer part of who we are. We have to focus on the inner part of who we are. We have to focus and live from our values, just like we do in our mission statement. Love, joy, integrity. Those are the three values that we live in this community by. And so if you don't know what that, those are for your own being, figure it out. You know, there's a list of values. You can sit down and do a process and go through and choose the ones that you like and then get it down to three. Just keep eliminating them until you really know what you stand for and what your values are. Because that will give you a foundation to be able to take the next step the next time you're in chaos. Well, is this really a challenge? And how am I going to move through it based on my values? How do I see love here? How do I get joy here? How do I live in integrity here? Because those are the types of questions that you can have that can continue to guide you 
And then always go back to that moment of prayer. So the silver cord, and I mentioned it, I don't know, in my meditation or a few minutes ago, who uh, refers to the spinal cord that runs along the inner walls of the spinal column and the golden bowl, which is the abnormal walls that contain and support the digestive organs. When the silver cord is loosened and the golden bowl is broken, death occurs. And I wanted to say this here because for many of us, our mothers have passed on, right? They're no longer on this physical realm. But in unity, what Charles Fillmore said is death has no part in the life of, the, of us and the real us. Senses are keen and illuminated. It is an ever unfolding, ever renewing spirit of infinite strength that sustains us and goes from glory to glory. The realization of spiritual strength at our center is what connects us to all that is. So even if um, our moms have passed on and we haven't resolved the relationship issues that we have, we carry that with us until we really look at it and discern how do we solve this if they've already, if they've already made their transitions. So there are times when you know, as I'm going through the grieving process with mama passing in December that, you know, I'm like, really, seriously? I came, because we talked every day. That's been a, a challenge. And so working through that discernment of, I still talk to her. <laughs> Here we go. Um, and we still have those conversations, right? Because I know she's still there. I just can't physically see her, but the presence is always with me. It's never separated from me. So whatever challenges I might be faced with, and some of them are around childhood, right? Because we all go through that. I can still have the conversation. She's in my living room. <laughs> in her urn right now. I have possession of her. And, and so for Derby, because that was a big thing in our family, and that was a, a part of her life, um, I put the Derby glass there and a bourbon ball and a picture of roses, and there we are. Um, put a rose up there for her. So, you know, we, we still have these connections. We still get nurtured. We still nurture others through our earthly connections. But we also have to do our own work around the mental connections and we do that, if you go back to the story, through denying that the power of a person or, a, in this instance, a machine has over us. So in the story, the animals represent the obstruction of peaceful worship In our quest to resolve our mental um, conscious thoughts and attachments, when we go to, to release or cut the cords with a person or situation, we have to mentally release it too. We can't just physically release it. We have to do it mentally. And so we have to understand that the animals in the story represent the chaos, the um, I can see. Think about a dog and a cat, or a couple dogs and cats, just being here with us right now, unleashed. What would that do? Would it be disruptive? Yeah. So that's what happens in our meditation. Those thoughts, those dogs and cats, are running through our minds. And so they're unleashed when we go to sit down to be quiet, right? That's what happens. We can keep them on the leash when we're busy and we're focused, but when we sit down to meditate, 
They just go bonkers. They just go everywhere. And so really learning how to use a denial to deny, not that it, it exists, because it exists. If there's a challenge in your life, you cannot deny it away. You have to deal with it, right? But we can deny that it has any power. We can deny that it has any power, that that person that is no longer in our life because we cut them loose, we let them go because it was a bad relationship. But yet we keep hanging on to maybe what they said or maybe what they did or we keep letting them invade our own joy. So we have to mentally release them and we do that through denials. All right, this has probably been all over the place today. And that's okay. Because the truth is, when we move through life, we come in with connection. We're connected to the physical earthly plane through another being, but we're also connected to the spiritual nature of God and truth. And we begin to form a mental connection within our own mind. And when we can have an understanding of the different layers of consciousness, because those are the three layers of consciousness, we can really begin to heal when we let go. When we release and let go, we can really do that when we understand all three levels of consciousness and the way they're intertwined and the way the cords run through all of our being, interconnected with every person that we encounter, every relationship that we have, and the relationship with spirit, and the relationship with our own self. It's all interconnected, and it's all you know, through the cords of life. And so it's how we show up to deal with, with the challenges, to solve the problems? Do we show up the first thing that we do every time is we go to God? We go to that place within ourselves and seek the guidance and seek the way to understand it. And if we can do that, then the life is loving, joyful, peaceful, and we're in integrity in everything that we say and do. I love you, I bless you, I love you, love you, love you, all you mothers, all you fathers who are mothers, all you nurturing creatures <laughs> in the universe, and I bless you. relationship with our moms is uh, special. <laughs> Somebody laughed and I, I get it. <laughs> it is special sometimes in lots of different ways, but uh, the connection is so unique. you here in a minute y'all don't want to see me cry I guarantee you wait a minute I 
was standing by my window on a cold, Lord, cloudy day when I saw that first come rolling for to carry my mom away. If y'all know the chorus, you're welcome to sing along. Will that circle be unbroken by and by, Lord, by and by? There's a better home awaiting in the sky. Sisters cry, what a poem so sad and low. Will that circle will be unbroken by and by, by and by. There's a bed, it's a home away in the sky. so good to be here today, and thank you, Reverend Valerie. We love you. Thank you, Charlie, and thank you, Don. So now's the time that we're going to take our offerings in our hands and say the blessing together. Divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I am, all that I have, all that I give, and all that I receive. Thank you, God. Forget what I'm doing here. All right. We say thank you, living, loving spirit, for these gifts, the gifts of love and light, knowing they go to nurture us, to nourish us, and to flow 
in and through us and into the universe as love with peace. And so it is. Amen. So I'd like to invite all the chaplains who are here to come to the front. And if anyone has a prayer need, they are here for you. Um, at this time, let's say the prayer for protection. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. And the presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. So there are no children, so we will sing the peace song together. Bless them wherever they are. All the children are with us. Now there is peace on earth, and now it begins with me. Now there is peace on earth, the peace that was meant to be with God as creator, united all are we. Now we walk with each other in perfect harmony. Peace has begun with me. And this is the moment now With every step I take Let this be my joyous vow To take each moment and live Each moment in peace, eternal 